one of my favorite politicians. She's awesome. I love her. And I love you, Bridget. Thank you so much for having me. Yay, Leela. What's your last name again? Uh, I'm Leela Sharon Ahir. Say that again. Leela Sharon Ahir. Ahir. Yes. Ahir. See, there's not, an H. Not, not a there. A there. She's not a there. I'm she's a here. A here. That's, right. <laughs> That's a great way to say <laughs> it. Way to remember. <laughs> so, um, who, who do you work for? Which uh, political party are you with? So, I am privileged to represent the United Conservative Party. I'm their deputy leader. Very cool. Yes, and I also have the ministries of uh, children's services and status of women. No and, way. Yep. That's awesome. I know. Now, Leela, you probably have seen her before. She's come to Women Talk, has joined us a couple of times, yeah. and she's got an amazing voice. Thank you. And you played the guitar so well. <laughs> well, the best time was is when we came at Christmas, right? And you had asked me to do a couple songs, and then we ended up having that amazing sing-along that had everybody singing. And then there was a women's group that sang as well, too. That was fantastic for a little choir. Yeah. It just gets everybody motivated, doesn't it? It changes the whole energy. I know. It was so great. Yeah. So, tell me a little bit about... What, there's like this truck here just I know shredding. shredding. Like, Hello! <laughs> oh! <laughs> It's like, I can beat you! <laughs> they get louder as we're yelling. I think we're having a contest. I don't think so. I don't think they know I have a hockey voice. Okay, good. You got hockey mom? <laughs> right on. No, I used to play hockey. I was That's right. I got lots of goals because I can call for the puck really loud. Yeah, my background's in opera, so... No can... way, really? Yeah, yeah. That is so cool. Yeah, I did my degree at the University of Manitoba in music performance. Wow! Mm -hmm. How did you ever get involved in politics? So it's a kind of long story, so short story, if, if you can believe that from a politician. Um, there was a party called the Wild Rose before. Yep. Uh, the Wild Rose had a bunch of politicians that crossed the floor in 2014. So in 2015, I was asked to run for the Wild Rose party. I managed to win that by the grace of God and literally by the skin of my nose. It was hard. We did 11,000 doors of door knocking. Yeah. 11,000? Yeah. That's 11, crazy. 11,000. It was crazy. Yeah. And then we won that. Then the Wild Rose and the PCs came together to form the United Conservative Party under Jason Kenney, who's the leader now. And I've had the massive privilege from him. He asked me to be his deputy leader. So it's been absolutely incredible. And so now the ridings have changed. Normally I'm Chestermere Rocky View, but they've changed the riding to Chestermere Strathmore. So I'm out here campaigning for my nomination. That's really cool. I love, what do you think of women in politics? I love it. It's an absolutely amazing thing to be part of it. Well, I don't know if you saw Doug Ford just won yes. in Ontario. They have over 30% women in their new caucus, which actually beats the Liberals. Wow. So yeah, it's incredible. We are strong. If women run, if you run, if you're a woman, you're going to win. So run and make sure you have your support and your team behind you. People who have faith in you, you need money. You need to be able to talk about it. You're completely, completely savvy, competent and available and willing to do it. You're, you're going to win. So what happens if I go liberal and I run against you? Well, I love you, but I'm going to beat you. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I wish you the best of luck because no. that's the most important thing in our system. And you would beat me in Alberta, let's just say. Well, you know what though? The truth is, and one thing that I love about our country and our province is that's democracy. Yeah. That is the privilege. Like, I'm in opposition right now. Yeah. A really strong opposition is what makes good government. And I love I people who run. I don't care what strike you run for. If you're passionate and you have good ideas, there's no shortage of good ideas. It doesn't just come from one party. But when, in my opinion, in this province, my conservative notions are the things that I believe in. And yeah. most of that has to do with fiscal responsibility. And that's what I'm looking for. So I, uh, but I love competition. And I love the fact that there's multi-parties because that's what you need to hold any government accountable. Totally. At any time. Yeah. And it's, I find it kind of interesting. Um, you know, I, I, I think I've, I've kind of changed because I've never voted for the PC or, yeah, yeah. you know, but after meeting you, I was like, damn, if I lived here, I would vote for you. <laughs> you would? Oh I my would. God. Because <laughs> I'm so honored. I think it's, it's about the, the people representing you more than the party. I don't know. It's kind of like, it's, it's a tough one because, you know, you have the party that you're kind of committed to, but yes. then you meet the people. And sometimes the person from the other party is more appealing to you. Well, and I think it's a trust factor. I know for the last three years for me, look at, I, I'm a, I'm a business and we worked really hard in our communities and I'm vested in our communities, but our children's future. 
here. Um, it doesn't matter what part you come from. That's what we're all invested in. And the biggest thing is, is that you have to earn those people's trust. If they believe that they can trust you, it, when you go to government, you're going to do what's in the best interest of those people. It's away from an ideology. It's actually about the province. Yeah. And for me, I didn't need this job. I, I didn't need to be a politician. I have three businesses. So for me, this is way bigger than any politics could ever have been. It's so much more about my province and the people I love and being able to represent and hearing all the different sides of things and consulting with people. Right? Was your family, when you were growing up, were, was it really political in your family? Well, How did you get the love? Well, it's interesting because um, my parents have always been conservatives, so we come from a long, long range of conservatives. But what was really, really interesting about what happened was that um, in uh, 20, or sorry, in uh, 1995, no, it would have been 1985 or so, uh, the Aryan Nations popped up in Caroline Alberta. It's a white supremacist group. And uh, they started touting out all of this information that anybody who wasn't from that background was an abomination. So my dad is from Southeast Asia, and my mom is Irish, English, Scottish, and Scandinavian background. So I'm a Heinz 57. You're like a perfect Canadian. I am. Well, I'm exactly what all of us are, right? Some, yeah. Some combination, right? So they called those of us who had this mix an abomination. So I wrote a letter back at the tender age of 15 going, prove it. And I started my very, very active role in politics at that time. And my principal at my school helped me to write a paper on the area nations at that time to present in front of the school to explain about various different kinds of mentalities and about bigotry and racism, right? So it's, it got me completely motivated at that time. And I got, I was, I was, I was hooked from that point on. Love it. And uh, what do you think of Women Talk? I love you guys. Like, I, I have to tell you, like, my personal experience has been incredible because I met Bridget in Edmonton, actually, when Kelly Farlado was talking about her movie coming out. And that day, there was a video about skydiving and to not be fearful about that big step. So I decided that day I was going to skydive. No way! So I, I didn't know I that. donated to Kelly's campaign and I skydived last summer with oh, her. Oh, cool! So it completely inspired me to step outside of my own Was it my factor. video of jumping? It was your video of jumping, right? Because that was in Edmonton when I met you the first oh. time. Yeah. So that's I, like my one year anniversary. Like I, I gotta look what day it was, but yeah. wow, that's so I met you all there. And do you know you know Lisa Free? Yeah. So Lisa's a very good friend of mine. She connected me to all of you. She was working with the United Conservative Caucus at that time. And then all of a sudden I was addicted and you guys invited me to Strathmore. And then I got to meet Sherry and all these other incredible people at Brenda. And I literally if I can if I don't have to miss one of your presentations, I don't I've met so many incredible women. As we blowing go away, away. Yeah. <laughs> so many incredible women from all sorts of different backgrounds, people who have inspired me with their stories. And Bridget, you bring out the best in people. Thank and, you. And people, like I was saying, there's people that I met today that have spoken at the top that have never spoken to each And for somebody like me who has spent her life, <laughs> spent her life speaking, um, to hear people, and I'm a musician, right? So my entire life was about inspiring people to come on. So seeing you do that is especially heartwarming, and I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. We love having you. You just brighten up a room. And I would vote for you. <laughs> Well, come to Strathmore. There's like some amazing bands happening. It's it's actually the nice. The Beer Garden. The Beer Garden. I know. They've been calling me. The girls yeah. want me to go have a shot of tequila. Yeah, come and buy a membership for me. I'm right beside. You have to have a membership to vote for me. So, yeah, come there and get a membership. There you go. Yep. All right. So, we'll yep. talk to you soon. Yep. Peace. Love Bye. you. Bye.